And it is now my pleasure to introduce to you our honored guest, Mr. Bennett B. This is what I do. And so what I'm going to do is go back about, oh, 30 years, 40, quite a while, um, and show you where I started and how I kind of made my way from there to here. Um, this, was, this is where I began. This was in California in the 60s, and we all thought we were Japanese. <laughs> so I really looked at it. How do I make a living from my work? Because I thought, I will never get a teaching job. They run out of it. And uh, because I thought I would get, by then I had a wife, child, house, stuff. And I thought, I will start if I do this. But she bought it. Okay? <laughs> and it was like, ding! I love them. I will communicate that to people. They will buy it. Because people are a little unsure about buying it. Uh, the faculty loved me. They gave me a sabbatical. The administration realizing that I was going on sabbatical two days before the sabbatical um, commenced. I got a result. You know, there was a paint and there was a pattern. And neither of those things had been done. And so I thought, oh, great. I had this, this piece turned into a car. And I was having a show at the Newark Museum in an upstairs hall <coughs> called the Mini Gallery. It was like two glass cases. It was really pathetic. But I took that and I put gold in it. And I loved that. I just loved it. I thought it was fabulous. And so, this is my version of that. I am just stupid enough. So I have to make the thing to figure out how it's going to come out. <laughs> and that's exactly the way I feel. I mean, I once had a, a like, well, if you look up there, you see that little bow tie looking thing up in the corner of the pot? That's called a butterfly woodwork. All right, my pot broke. It cracked right down the side. So I thought, I'll patch it. So I put a you know, strap around it, glued it together, inlaid the butterfly, and then sent it out to a gallery. And this was some time ago, and selling cracked pots was a tough road to hold it. And, but I, I kind of went with that. I mean, it, 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 much of my response is, is responding to mistakes I made. So I have this, and so I did that, and then, look at those butterflies now. They've become a huge design motif. So you take that disaster, and you, push it, and you pay attention to it, and you don't make judgments like that's an evil, bad thing that happened. You're open to it. There's this wonderful Middle Western saying, you got your nose open. And it comes from the fact that when a bull snorts, it opens its nose, and you can put a ring just like that, and then leave the bull. So much of my life is approached with my nose open to those kinds of acts. It's, it's like they're not about use. They are about two things. They are about space inside and decorative skin outside. That's their subject in the same way that a painting has a subject. And what happened is I was staying in this woman's house. She owns a gallery in Chicago. It's on a semi-precious stone because I was buying rock collections from widows at this time. I mean, what happens is the old man goes out and collects rocks all his life. And then he drops dead. And the, the, Life is faced with this mountain of rocks in the top. And they would say three years, decided he would take a new lover and do something else. And I ceased to exist in the art world that minute. So I thought, don't ever give anybody that kind of power again. Have as many galleries as you can. And of course, the galleries hate it because everyone else wants to be in control because it's the only place in the world they can get people collectors can get your words from them, then they sell more. But in the column business, you get things called change orders, and they go, oh, we ordered that, yes, but we, we want it smaller now. Here's the money for what you build, build us more. And so the paint columns, there were eight paint columns that were supposed to go to the Hawaii, to this woman who had a, a, a three acres on the ocean. And she ordered them and sent me the down deposit, and then she called back and said, well, my decorator says I can't use paint in the garden. And so I said, well, I'll keep it. And she said, there's a huge, huge market for teapots out there. If you make teapots, I can sell your teapots. I said, my clay has more blood. She said, not a problem. The teapot has two rules, spout and lid. They don't care what they look like. Good. So that little kind of bullety looking thing sticking out of the end is a spout, and then the bump is the lid. So I made a lot of teapots for this.
Some of them are absolutely wonderful and amazingly interesting. And there's this couple who commissioned little tiny pots. They have, they have they're big glass pipes, but they buy my work. So it's these little two tiny pots. We'd like one for each of us. So I'm thinking about them, and, and right then both of them were kind of portable. And so I'm thinking about their little bodies. Not like that big, but a little guy like that. Uh, now the biggest piece that I've ever made and the most expensive piece I ever made and sold is 30000 That's for a big four-part piece, which is serious money for property. Uh, so just like um, It is a huge advantage if you make art to be dyslexic. It's not so good in the rest of the world because I am very bad at things that come, at things that come in a row, like one, two, three, four, five. When I used to take those Buddhist classes, they've got the 10 minutes and the 30 second pass. I could never get those things to stay in my mind. They just wouldn't stay. And so, um, but if you get, you know, B's, P's, 9's, 6's, D's, basically the pots have paid the bills forever. But every, I mean, I did sell a lot of columns that they made. I did sell lots of those. And, and we, but we never broke even on the trowels and the chickens. Terrible. And beekeeping was terrible because I, you know, I got allergic to bees. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's just this endless process of wandering around in this life that I've got. And it's possible for your kids to have that life one way or another. But it takes your support and a huge amount of luck. Just, I mean, the great thing about art is you don't have to. You can approach that world with the same kind of joy and curiosity of a child. I do.